In this video, I'm going to try and help you guys resolve every problem with QCMA for your PS Vita. As you guys know, QCMA is perfect for installing Hencor, um, for installing other apps. It's a pretty useful program because it lets you bypass a load of stuff. It also lets you run it offline, so you don't have to be on the latest PS Vita version to use it. This PS Vita right here is on version 3.68, and I wish to connect because I actually want to get the original version of Hencor, which I will probably make another video on. So first of all, I actually need to turn my PS Vita off. Um, QCMA is not very friendly with um, SD to Vita cards so if you have an SD to Vita I would recommend powering your PS Vita off and just going ahead and just taking it out. You can put it back in afterwards and you won't have any problems so we're just going to go ahead and remove this to start off with. Okay, so next, when we go ahead and power it back on, we don't actually need to um, run our custom firmware. We can actually leave it as it is. As you guys know, people use this to hack their PS Vitas, so they won't have custom firmware in the first place when launching it up. So yeah, we don't actually need to load custom firmware when we turn our PS Vita on. Obviously, if you're watching this and you don't have custom firmware, then that's completely fine. You can just leave it on the home screen just like this. So for the next part, what we're going to do is head over to my PC and we're going to try and fix some stuff on there. Alright guys, so over on your computer, you want to go to the link in the description so we can grab the latest version of QCMA. If you have it already, I would recommend just re-downloading it if you're having issues. So go ahead and find the Downloads folder section, look for Windows and just click on the Windows installer. Currently, at the time of making this video, it's version 0.4.1, but if yours is on a newer firmware, that's completely fine, you can download that as well. So once it's finished downloading, we can find the latest version in our downloads folder, but we're not done yet. What I would recommend doing is uninstalling the previous version. So if you guys just go ahead and open up a control panel, if you guys just click on the search icon, you can type in uninstall programs. You'll be able to find QCMA in here, and what we're going to do is simply uninstall it. So we're just going to click on uninstall right here. And now we're just going to click on yes or OK or whatever it says, select your language, click on OK and we're simply going to uninstall it. Now click on finish and now we're ready for reinstalling. If it's still displaying here, what you have to do is right click and click on refresh. If you don't know how to get to this, there's many ways to get to uninstall a program. Go to your control panel, programs, programs and features or you can just type in uninstall apps and you'll be able to find it um, on Windows 10. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the setup process again and we're going to try and fix everything. So you just want to double click on the setup process and when it appears all you guys want to do is just click on yes and then we're just going to wait for it to load up and as you can see the setup is loading. Now once it finishes it asks for our language again, you guys can choose whatever you want. I'm just going to click OK for English, we're going to click next. I agree, click next again, next one more time, make sure Win USB driver is um, selected and just click on install. If you get some kind of error, what you can actually do is restart your PC if it's still not working or what you can do is actually just click abort and we can simply try it again. So once your PC has been restarted, if you keep on getting this error, you can just double click to load it up again. And what we're going to do is simply try this step again. So we're going to choose English. We're going to click next. We're going to click I agree. We're going to click next again. Next one more time. Make sure this is selected. Click on install. And as you can see, it works. You can also go into task manager. And if you find QCMA in there, you can actually um, stop the process. But maybe you guys will find it easier just to restart. On this section, we need to click next again. We're going to install the driver and now we're just going to click on finish. We want to click on run QCMA and we're going to click on finish again. And there you go, it's freshly installed. Hopefully any errors would have been fixed. Now we're going to try and connect it to our PS Vita without encountering any errors. So what you guys want to do to open up the settings is just click on the arrow right here. You can actually find QCMA, right click it and just click on settings. If you go to the other section, you can pretty much leave these settings or you can have it on always up to date. That should be okay as well. Um, this one, leave on latest and now we can actually try. If you just click on okay, what we're going to tr try now is try and connect our PS Vita. Okay guys, so now what we can try, let's see if we have fixed all of the errors. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and open up content manager. We need to go down to the copy content, so we're just going to tap on that and then we're just going to go and connect our PS Vita via the USB. So make sure you just plug that in and now we can connect PC, USB cable and let's see if it will connect. 
And there you go guys, that is how you fix every error with QCMA. At the start of this video, I was having lots of problems and I just couldn't get it working. So if you guys follow along with what I did, um, uninstall it, reinstall it, make sure to copy the same settings as me, make sure offline mode is ticked. If you're having lots of problems, um, untick offline mode and then tick it back. Sometimes that's a glitch that can get it working again. Um, this software, to be honest, is really, really well made, but I have so many issues with it every single time I try and use it to make a video. So hopefully this video helped. Um, this is pretty much what I do every time to get it working again. Sometimes it's quite a long process, but if it works, it works. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.